Your acoustic sounds like trash. Here's how you can make it sound way better. Guys, what is going on? I Guitar here with you all today. Today we're going through ways in which we can make our acoustic sound way better. So, a big part of what I hear in most coffee shops, churches, and even small singer-songwriter rounds are terrible sounding acoustics. I can tell you, acoustic sounds are not tricky to get. Like you can get a decent acoustic sound with most acoustic electric guitars, but I'm telling you all, half of y'all have terrible sounding tone and you get it fixed really bad. So in this video, we're gonna address five common reasons why your acoustic tone ain't up to par. Now this list is not exhaustive, but we'll give you a good benchmark to test to see if your acoustic may lack in some of these areas. So let's go on with number five. Number five, your preamp ain't up to snuff. So guys, when it comes to getting a good preamp on your guitar, not every guitar actually needs a preamp installed on board. You could actually have a preamp after the guitar itself. You have to understand what the preamp is used for though. So a preamp is really a part of the gain structure of your instrument and is entirely meant to get your guitar up to a certain amount of volume before it hits the actual soundboard. You see, most acoustic guitars don't produce enough output for a soundboard to grab like easily, right? So you can actually bump up an acoustic guitar in the mix on your soundboard significantly, but eventually every preamp begins to induce some kind of hiss. And usually what happens is if your guitar's preamp isn't pumping up enough volume into the soundboard itself, you're gonna find that the volume's gonna be very, very fizzy, maybe a little hummy, and it's severely lacking a lot of tonal qualities. We'll get into that a little bit more later, but essentially, not every guitar needs a preamp, but if you do have one, you have to make sure that it's a decent one. My biggest gripe with modern preamps is that most preamps tend to compress your sound a whole bunch. You see, you had the preamp section, and then the actual pickup section of the guitar. Now, whether or not you have a piezo or a microphone style pickup, the preamp's gonna tend to compress that signal at some point in its chain. So if you have like a standard preamp in your guitar, for example, you begin to pump up the gain, the preamp's gonna end up squashing a lot of that tone, especially if your power supply is sagging. And what I mean by that is, most active preamps in guitars have a nine volt battery installed. So as that nine volt begins to die off, right, you're gonna end up having the preamp work harder to push gain to the console, right? And so what ends up happening is you induce power sag. Now power sag is a thing in a lot of different like boss pedals with nine volts installed. It does offer you a very peculiar sound. And a lot of people actually try to emulate power sagging in their pedals or their amp rigs sometimes to get that weird saturated nine volt sag sound. But for acoustics, you don't want that, not at all. So pick up preamp that's worth installing in your guitar. But don't forget, you can do a lot of things on the back end of your chain and not have to put a preamp actually in the guitar, which I personally prefer. We'll get into that a little bit more with number four. Number four, choose a pickup that's worth its salt. Now guys, listen, a lot of the times when you're buying a guitar off the market, especially acoustic guitars, your actual pickups are gonna be hit or miss. There are some guitars that have really great pickup systems. For example, did a review a long time ago before my child about the Taylor Expression 2 pickup system on one of their 414 CLE DLXs, and those things sound amazing. But you can bet for sure that only Taylor's going to supply an ES2 style system for their instruments. And a lot of us have personal gripes about Taylor's versus other acoustic guitars. So it's important when you're picking out a piezo pickup or some kind of microphone pickup that you pick an actual decent pickup. My personal favorite, K&K pickups. Got a new one installed on my Hummingbird. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute here. It's one of my favorite pickups because it is passive, so I don't require an actual battery to feed the actual pickup. And I also am able to get really great sounds without it compressing. Now I know that we talked about compression back in the preamp section of the video, but compression can happen on the microphone side or the piezo side as well. Anytime you have a microphone source being overloaded, you are gonna introduce some, some kind of compression. And a lot of manufacturers and their desires to make a pickup sound louder will take that loudness at the expense of maybe dynamics, right? So you'll have a louder sound, but your guitar tone ends up getting squashed to death. That's really important to think about when you're getting an acoustic. And that moves into number three, which is your acoustic guitar may not just sound good on its own. 
Now that's a bit of a tough pill to swallow, but hear me out here. Acoustic guitars vary widely in the manufacturing specifics. Every builder has their own thing, their own niche, and every guitar will sound a little bit different. And did you know that actually if you buy a guitar new off the factory shelf, it does take a while to break in the guitar, kind of like a baseball mitt, right? So the actual surface area of the top of the guitar once you have it resonating enough, will actually open up and express new sounds and new dynamics you never heard of before when you just got it off the shelf, right? So keep that in mind when you're getting an acoustic guitar. Sometimes if an acoustic guitar sounds dead, right, right off the bat, you may want to think about moving to a different one. And you'll know what a dead acoustic guitar sounds like compared to a good one, right? You can pick up some great guitars off the shelf and see how they express in the room that you're in. But don't just keep it in that room. A lot of times I see a lot of players, they play the guitar they want in the actual acoustics room where it's designed to make the acoustics sound really, really good. So you can have a really mediocre guitar sound pretty good in a decently tuned acoustics room, especially in things like guitar centers, other big box stores that have their own specified acoustic climate controlled space. Take that guitar out of the acoustic space and play it in the bigger areas, right? You wanna make sure that it's gonna sound good wherever you are. And not every guitar, every guitar will respond differently to, to a different room as well, but you're gonna find more of the character of the guitar when you're playing it outside of the acoustic space than inside. So keep that in mind, right? Then also, be aware of which model you're getting. A lot of times, people will end up buying a guitar that's in a very peculiar shape just because they think it sounds cool or it looks cool or whatever. And I will tell you that most guitar manufacturers are still trying to meet that D18, that Martin D28 style dreadnought sound. And it depends on what guitar you want and how big the guitar is, but really, the slope-shouldered, square-shouldered dreadnoughts are a great barium. They're a great standard for measuring all the other guitars against one another. So make sure you have a decent guitar, know what it sounds like, and pick one out and be careful because every guitar sounds different. All right, number two, we're gonna talk about signal chains and sound. Let's move on to my Hummingbird. All right, so let's talk about my acoustic for a second here. I've got a Gibson Hummingbird 2004. It is a great guitar. I love the way it sounds. It definitely sings in your hand. But I want to talk about what I'm doing to get the sounds you're hearing coming out of the, of the actual recording because, as you can see, I'm not actually going to be playing through the sound hole for you. We've got a little pickup installed. It's the K&K Pure Mini, one of my favorite passive acoustic guitar pickups. It just sounds incredible. Makes the guitar sound really natural. Now, what you're hearing hearing from me is you're going to be hearing it going into a compressor. Now, what the compressor is going to be doing is it's going to be adding a lot of gain on the front end. I'm not actually increasing gain on the guitar itself. I'm using a great quality studio style compressor to add a little bit of compression, but mainly output volume. And that's going to be hitting a simple chorus along with a reverb and a delay, okay? And so I hope you guys enjoy the sounds and we'll talk about it soon after I finish playing a little demo for you guys.
So that's one way of making an acoustic sound great. I'm using the gain from a compressor to affect the sound. I don't like a lot of gain on the front end of my guitar only because it increases the ability for my guitar to feed back, right? I want the gain coming off of the guitar on the back end. That's a personal choice. That's really up to you. But this guitar was actually um, not routed to begin with. So you'll notice that the actual side of the guitar doesn't have that traditional kind of Fishman style you know, inlay block with the preamp section in it. I'm doing all of my passive pickups are all underneath this little bridge. Three little microphone dots you kind of super glue underneath this bridge here. And then the output jack, all passive, all great. Going into a great input buffer and then into obviously a compressor for the output volume. We've got a little bit of reverb, we've got a little bit of chorus, a little bit of delay, as well as the final output going through a buffered um, DI box, which is going to increase the great tone and be able, to, be able to match impedance on the back end toward the soundboard. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. All right, number one, the biggest reason why your tone may not be quite there, you don't have a decent DI box. Now guys, we talked about DI boxes before on the channel. I have a video in the description about what a DI box does and how it works. But essentially, a lot of these guitars have very, very, very high impedance pickups, right? You need to match the impedances of the pickups and be able to take it out to the soundboard and it not lose any signal degradation. Make sure you have a decent DI box. I recommend the T-Garden DI has one giga ohm of output impedance, so it can pretty much take any pickup from passive to active and sound really, really, really great. Make sure when you're buying a pickup or when you're buying a DI box, you know, make sure that it can handle how high the impedance is on some of these passive pickups, right? So it'll save your life and save your tone, I guarantee it. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time. Guys, hopefully this helps you decide how you want to develop your acoustic sound. A lot of things are involved here from acoustics to playing to actual onboard effects and things like that. So make sure you're putting your best foot forward as you decide to develop your acoustic sound, right? Too many people are playing an acoustic guitar right into a soundboard and it sounds like garbage. Guys, you need a decent acoustic, good onboard electronics, you need a great sound system, great DI box, and build an actual rig to envelop your acoustic sound. You will not regret it. It'll make your guitar sound way better and will therefore increase your confidence in your playing. It'll make you a better musician. Have a good one, guys, and we'll see you next time on Night Guitar.